So in the last couple of videos, we saw what is this 10 day Vipassana meditation bootcamp is. And for the first three days, we practice Anapana, which is the practice of breath awareness so that we can cultivate a stable and focused attention. Yeah. And if you spend three days in the Vipassana meditation bootcamp, uh, chances are, or at least my initial expectation was that uh, if you put me in a space, in a nice and comfortable space without any distractions, I should be feeling very peaceful, very blissful, very comfortable inside myself, right? Uh, because I don't have any distraction, I don't have to do any work and all this kind of stuff. So I should feel very blissful and comfortable and peaceful inside myself, right? And the reality couldn't be opposite of that, right? In fact, what we feel is so much discomfort inside ourselves, so much restlessness, so much, you know, uh, thoughts and emotions, conflicts without any kind of rhythm and rhyme. We are just not feeling very well inside, you know. And we see it directly. We don't, we generally don't see it because we are so much engaged in so many different activities. But when we sit in a quiet and comfortable place for such a long time, uh, it becomes very clear that we are not doing very well inside ourselves, by ourselves, you know. Our default state is not very comfortable. It's very, in fact, very uncomfortable, yeah. Then the question becomes, uh, why is that? Why are we not feeling very comfortable inside ourselves? And what we can do about it, right? And Buddha looked into this issue, right? Why are we not doing very well inside ourselves? What is going on here, right? And he looked into it and he just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper until he find the root cause. And what he found is pretty amazing. This is what he finds out in a more simplified version. Is that, let's say I am having an experience. Uh, I was talking to somebody. And then somebody praised me. Uh, now what happens is somebody praised me and then I am feeling this very uh, pleasant experience. I am feeling this very pleasant sensations inside my body, right? And then there is a part of me which clings to this pleasant sensations, right? But these pleasant sensations are very impermanent in, in its nature. So what happens is because I cling to it, that pleasant sensation passed away. And now because of my clinging, I have this craving. And this craving is what is creating these thoughts inside my mind that I should be doing this so that people can, you know, appreciate me more or people can, uh, I can impress people, these kind of thoughts and emotions, right? So this experience, what experience I was having created a pleasant sensation and because of my clinging to that pleasant sensation, that experience is stuck in my system, internal system, right? And now that internal, uh, that experience is creating these different thoughts and emotions inside me, yeah? Uh, and this 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 process of you know uh, this impression that got stuck inside myself is called samskara, right? That there is a samskara that got stuck because of an experience that was happening, and I got cling to that experience. The opposite is also true, right? If I was having an experience, and then somebody criticized me, and now I am having this sensation in my body which are very unpleasant, right? And there is a very natural tendency. It's not that something we are doing ourselves, right? It's like very natural tendency to avert it right, to push it out. And because of that action, that impression got stuck in ourselves, right? And that impression is also called samskara, right? So we have these samskaras, we are having these impressions, we are having these experiences in our life. And because we are not comfortable with different sensation in our body, some sensation we really like, so we cling to it, some sensation we don't like, so we try to push it out. So we accumulate impressions based on these, right? And because these impressions are getting accumulated inside ourselves, now these impressions are creating these thoughts and emotions which are in conflict with each other and which are creating this disturbance inside our mind, right? This is what is creating this restlessness inside our mind, right? So this is what he find out is the root cause, right? This, this, this nature of clinging that we have, right? This, whenever something nice happens, we cling to it, right? Without understanding, uh, we understand intellectually, we understand, um, you know, more on the surface level, but deep inside a part of us doesn't understand that these experiences are impermanent, right? And when we cling to those experiences, then we have this tendency of, you know, craving inside ourselves that when that experience, you know, when we are sitting by ourselves, there's all these thoughts and emotion to, you know, get more of those kind of experiences or avoid these kind of experiences. And that is what the root cause of all our problem. That is the root cause of all our restlessness and suffering inside ourselves, right? How is that? How is the it is the root cause of all these different states that we are experiencing. Let's say, for example, somebody's, let's say I am experiencing depression, right? How come I am experiencing depression when, when I'm by myself, right? I had an experience, for example, let's say I had an experience 
that I was in relationship with somebody, right? And that relationship was beautiful. So I was feeling these pleasant sensations inside my body, right? I, I mean, it may not be very nice to say, but I really didn't care about other person. What I was caring about this pleasant sensation that I was feeling in my body, right? So I was in a relationship, I was feeling very pleasant sensation and the relationship ends. Now, because I cling to that pleasant sensation and the relationship ends, I have craving for more of that pleasant experience, but I cannot have it, right? In that case, this experience become like a depression. It continues and continues and continues and become like I am in a depressive state now, right? But the root cause is still my clinging to some pleasant experience, right? Without understanding this is very impermanent in its nature. Another example can be anxiety. Somebody's feeling anxiety. Why are you feeling anxiety, right? Because you are ex anticipating an experience that you didn't like in the past, right? So again, this samskara, this past experience of, you know, avoiding some experience, is now creating this anxiety. You are talking, you are in the group of the people, you are feeling very uncomfortable, you want to run away. Why is that? Because maybe in the past, somebody criticized you in the group and you didn't feel very well and now there's this uh, aversion that is happening, right? So this is what Buddha is saying. You have a very deep-rooted habit of clinging and craving based on this ignorance. This is what he calls three poisons, right? Ignorance, clinging and aversion, right? So you have a very deep-rooted habit of this clinging because this clinging, which is the root cause of all your problem, right? And this clinging is happening because of this basic ignorance of impermanence, right? The nature of these sensations are impermanent in their nature. And if you cling to them, you are going to suffer. You are going to create the samskara and the samskara is going to create noise in your head and you're just not going to feel good. And what is going to happen is in the world, you are not going to feel comfortable with all the things. All you will be is the comfortable with very small bandwidth of stuff which is okay with your samskara, which is okay with your past experiences, right? And you just feel annoyed and agitated and irritated with all the other things, right? The weather is like this today. I feel <laughs> annoyed because of weather. This is complete nonsense, right? This, uh, because of these different experiences we, you know, accumulated in the past, um, we are suffering uh, and we are creating this restlessness and, you know, this disturbance inside ourselves. This is the diagnosis from Buddha. And... Uh, then the question is, how do we get out of it, right? What can we do about it? And mo mo clear, obvious answer would be is to stop this process, stop this process of clinging to different experiences when they are having, right? Instead of that, experience them, you know, enjoy them. It doesn't mean you stop enjoying them, right? Um, you enjoy them and then you let them go. And then the new experience comes and then you enjoy it, then you let it go. Sometimes the good experience will happen, sometimes not so good experience will happen. And then if you don't have this uh, process of clinging going on, you can enjoy your life much better, right? You can enjoy your life much better. So one, one thing that has to happen if the diagnosis, this is if this is the diagnosis, and if you agree with the diagnosis, this is one thing that has to happen is we need to stop this process of clinging inside ourselves, right? Clinging and avoidance. And the second thing ha needs to happen is whatever we have accumulated, right? That is creating so much noise and so much disturbance inside ourselves, has to go away, has to purify, right? And this is what vipassana is doing, right? This is what the basic practice of Vipassana. What, in terms of the practice, what we do is, we, uh, we just move our attention from top to bottom, bottom to top, and we learn to experience the sensation, right? So the first thing is, we need to be sensitive enough to reach that part which is creating this clinging and aversion, right? So we move our attention top to bottom, bottom to top, uh, or in any other direction, so that first we become sensitive about the sensation. What are the different sensations that I'm experiencing, right? Mostly we experience this grosser sensation, uh, you know, like when you are feeling happy, your heart is filled and all these kind of stuff. We are experiencing generally these grosser sensations, but they're even more deeper and subtle sensations that are happening, right? So Vipassana makes you very sensitive about your sensations, right? What is happening? What kinds of sensation we are feeling, right? And then we are learning to stay present with those sensations and then we are learning to stay equanimous with those sensations instead of clinging and aversion to different sensations with the understanding of impermanence, right? with the understanding of, you know, this is not going to last forever. This sensation is impermanent. And if I cling to it, I am going to create this samskaras and this craving, which are going to make my life harder, which is going to make everything inside myself very restless, right? So we are learning to stay present with these different sensations without creating, uh, without clinging to them with the understanding of impermanence. This is basic practice, right? So this is the first part. So I can stop creating more of these disturbance inside myself, right? At least, uh, so this is the first part. The second part, 
how can I get rid of the things that I have accumulated in the past, right? I wasn't very smart. I was a small child, right? And if something felt good, I cling to it. That's very natural tendency. But that created a, now that is creating an issue inside my head, right? So is there a way I can get rid of the past accumulated samskaras, past accumulated impressions inside myself, right? Which are kind of running my life right now. And the answer is beautiful. It is almost a natural process, right? Just like if I get, if I get the cut in my body, my body has a self-healing system, right? It heals by itself. I don't need to do anything. The same way, if I learn to stay present with my current sensations without creating this clinging and aversion, uh, these past impression comes up by themselves and they pass away, right? They just come up by themselves and they pass away. And this is why people feel so much restless in their Vipassana meditation bootcamp. This is why people are feeling so emotional. Some people are crying. Some people are doing different things. Uh, because these accumulated impurities inside ourselves are coming up and they are passing away. They are coming up and they are passing away. If we don't touch them, if we don't, you touch it, you own it, right? So if you don't touch them, if you don't cling to them, they just come and they pass away, right? And now it takes time. It's not going to happen in 10 day Vipassana meditation bootcamp, but it's a process that it starts, right? And once we start practicing that more and more and more, uh, what we find is it actually cleans out. You will, if you are feeling depressed or if you're feeling anxiety in different situation, if you're feeling fear or whatever, you will notice you don't feel that anymore. Yeah? You don't feel that because there's a no root cause. The samskara that was creating the, those emotions are passing away. So you don't feel them anymore, right? It is much, much more deeper and I would say more smarter way to work on this as compared to, you know, working on the surface um, and dealing with them that way. So as you take out more and more of your impur impurities and more and more of your samskara, you start to feel comfortable, right? Instead of your default state, when we started, our default state was very much restless, uncomfortable and not just pleasant inside ourselves, right? It slowly started to turn into very pleasant and very peaceful and very blissful inside ourselves for no reason, for no reason. You're just feeling good inside yourself because that's what your more natural state is, right? Once we get rid of these impurities and once we get rid of this habit of clinging to different experiences. So that is what the Vipassana meditation does. That is the first value proposition of the Vipassana meditation which we can call non-negative, right? So we are not feeling good inside itself uh, with the practice, with the gradual and regular practice. We can get to the states uh, where we are doing very well inside, in fact, right? So where we feel very naturally happy and we are feeling naturally peaceful inside ourselves. And from that place, uh, if we engage externally in the world, it's even much more productive. It, it is much more uh, enjoyable, right? Because we are not clinging, so things are very... Uh, you know, we are experiencing good and bad and we, we have the same emotion, we have the same sensations, uh, but we enjoy them even more with the understanding of these are not very permanent. So whatever we are experiencing, we experience it with more intensity, in fact, right? But more important than that, it's like your internal state is more, you know, purified. You don't uh, feel any strong urge to, you know, do something to make yourself feel better or that kind of stuff. That a very beautiful. That is a very beautiful benefit of vipassana meditation. That uh, it takes you. It, it changes your default state from very discomforting and painful to a beautiful and natural internal state. Right. And in the next video, we'll take a look at um, uh, the positive. This was more like non-negative. We will see a more positive aspect of vipassana meditation, which is how it leads to clarity and insights. Yeah.